Hey guys, what's up and welcome to the Phil Studio. Today is a great day because we're going to record guitar with these three different piezo microphone. Before I hit the record button, I'll show you on the bench how I managed to create a small wire with a one fourth connector and two alligator clip to ease the process of recording these piezo mic. Let's go. Okay, so before we start soldering anything, uh, I, I invite you to watch my uh, last video on the low frequency response of these three microphones. It was a pretty interesting experiment, but was not enough for me to test all these microphones and their full capacity. So um, that's why I'm making this video where I will record guitar with these three piezo microphones. Uh, I could use some regular alligator clip like that, but they are a little bit big for the small wire it's a bit overkill and I want to go with something like a little bit more stylish so I got these little crimp here uh, you just have to remove that part solder your wire pass it through the hole and solder it to that metal plate and then you place it back make sure it's well aligned there's a little um, hole here and you will slide it here like that so I have a um, red one and a black one for uh, both wire negative and positive signal and for the choice of my wire I went for something that was shielded uh, here I have a one and two pair uh, it's too much for what I needed them for so I'll just cut the green and the white wire and I'll keep the the red and the black wire and there is a shield so I will solder it with the black wire because I want the negative to be shielded all the way until the connector so I have this 1 fourth inch connector here for guitar instrument uh, that I will plug into my recorder my which is my sound card these are really nice connector because they are easy to use just remove that okay I think they are stuck here that that's cool okay so you will solder your negative ear to the big part and which is the sleeve and the positive the red wire to this little pin here which is the tip of your jack the tip and the sleeve this is a mono connector it's perfect for the application uh, and you can see here there is a little hole so I'll right away pass the wire in there uh, the hole is a bit larger than the wire. Don't really like that, but for the experiment and uh, experimental wire, it's gonna be perfect for what what we want to do. So I'll just skin the wire around here to have enough length. So this tool is really nice to skin the wire. I don't know what it's called but it's the best you got a little blade and it just fit on the wire cable you make some turn like that and it just cut all of the cable without cutting the inside wire so this is our shield it's pretty long and I don't want it to be that long. I think I'll use shrink on the shield because I don't want it to get in contact with any other stuff while I record. I don't want to accidentally touch it and induce my body signal into the recording. So you have a little plastic wrapping here. Just get rid of it. Here I have my shield. 
I will twist it like that, really gently. I think this is a good length. Um, just figure out. Yeah, that's a good length. We don't need that much long because we already have uh, two wires here to give us some space to work. So I'll cut these two wire here since I don't need them. Okay, so here we're good. So I'll twist the shield really well. And what you can do to fix it, definitely power up your soldering iron, make sure it's hot. And you just add a little coating of solder around and just to hold in place the shield and make sure it doesn't unwrap. Um, so make sure you cut about this yep. back wire skin gently they are pretty small so i'll get a longer yeah that's good and if you can you twist the back core with the shield then i'll cut a bit of the red wire skin it gently so I don't want this to be um, to be skinned like that, to be leave, to be left like that. So I'll add a shrink. Make sure you have a large shrink. I really like the blue color, so I'll go with a blue shrink all over the shield, like that. Make sure it stays in place. And before I heat it, I'll cover the rest with a, a smaller shrink like that. It's gonna be beautiful. Gonna look professional, gonna be solid. Yeah, this is not a NASA test. It's just a field studio, but we do stuff like grown up here. We don't mess up. So let's put that shrink until there here. That's perfect. Like that. So you can pull the blue shrink just over like that. That's perfect, isn't it? You can heat the shrink. Using a lighter no, is not the best way to heat the shrink, but just work well for me because I don't have a heat gun. My girlfriend uh, has a hair dryer, but well, just go with the, the good old lighter technique and make sure you don't like hold it in place too long or you'll just burn the shrink. You just want to heat it. You don't want to burn it. Okay, time to solder or just thin the wire. I'll use the third hand here. All right. Let's thin that wire. The red wire, black wire here. Don't need that much to thin the wire, especially if your tip is really clean. The tip of your soldering iron, of course. So we're going to thin this here also as well. And I'm pretty sure this stuff is really fragile uh, and I don't want to burn the plastic casing. So I'll go as quick as possible and gently. Yeah, oh, this is a bad metal. I don't think this is made to be soldered. Okay, we, we, we managed to do it. It was quick. First of all, you pass the red wire. OK. 
can we cut the excess? That's great. And then you want to make sure you align everything before you solder because remember you have to adjust it and pass this little hole here into, into the place. So I'm just going to solder that. You can see, but I do it. It's really easy because you only have to eat again the lead and boom, it's in place. I'm gonna check that it's solid, yep, solid. Slide it back and in there. Yeah, that's it. So this small wire is very fragile, so we'll be careful when manipulating it. Like just don't rip it off. Leave it like that. Smooth. I'm gonna do the same for the black wire. Apply some solder here. Gently, quickly, especially quickly. That's it. And Pass the wire in here. I'm going to adjust the length. You don't need all that. I'm going to cut a little bit here. All right. Make sure everything is in place. Solder there. All right. Good to go. If you're good enough, you can use your left hand solder if, if you can do this well that's a nice skill to have definitely it requires dexterity but I started and when I first started I, I tried doing it with both and most of the time uh, because sometimes you're not in a position to to work comfortably with the right hand, so you just use your left hand. Uh, for me, it works well. So this is a little tips. You can manage to develop that skill. Well, that's nice. That's good. Okay. So we have our two alligator clip. I don't know, like these little crimp. So now is the time to cut the desired length. I'll go with at least eight foot. I need around eight foot. So I cut this ear. Boom. So we're gonna skin the other part, the other end of the, uh, the wire. it okay and here we have the shield take away all of the shield twist it we're gonna use it again with the black wire and you can remove plastic little plastic skin Green and white, we don't need. I'm going to cut this spare. That's it. Yeah. And this special wire uh, will be useful to test, like not just these piezo, but any various or other kind of gadget in the world of audio like even if I have a breadboard I can just plug my little crimp uh, and plug this into my amp or my recorder to try to listen to like what I've just built 
uh, if you're into making your own guitar effect can be a great tool to add in end we're just gonna wrap these two twist these two together and like always thin your wire it will help it will help to solder after. The black wire, which is under. Good. So we have well tin wire here. Look at this. It's great. Okay, so this part here and there. Slide it. Uh, now we we have pretty long. I think it's an it's good. Yep, it will be good. So what we want to do is thin the outer part of this here, and we're gonna place this little older, the wire older right away. Okay, we're gonna thin the connector. It will really help for the soldering. This is good, a good quality metal, like the solder was really easy to apply. All right, so like I mentioned, the red wire on the little part and the black wire, which is the shield or the sleeve on the bigger part here. Good, then this little guy. Good, test your solder. I just gently applying force, not too much. This looks like a good job. Then you slide it, the plastic here. Just up there, all the way down, and you screw that back. So this looks pretty solid to me. And before doing anything, I'll test, as usual, the continuity with my multimeter. Clearly, this is really easy to do, takes a second, so Always do it. Always. Never forget to do that. No short. Continuity is okay. Yeah. Perfect. So we're ready to record. Okay guys, so now that we've recorded these three different piezo mic, I'll go into the software and we'll analyze these three different takes. So you can see the small and the medium piezo add a fairly lower gain than the large piezo. So we'll just adjust this right away. So they match the gain and the, the same volume as the last one, something close. Okay, so we're listening to the small piezo. The bass sounded so thin. It's look like there. It sounds like there's a a low cut filter. Listen to the first low E.
but the eye notes are pretty clear. Then I look at the strumming. It's not that bad, but there's a lack of low frequency in that in that record. Sounds like a walkie-talkie uh, AQ. Okay. We're going to check the medium piezo now. It's better. Was sharp. Was sharp. You could hear the cracking of the the string. I think with some EQ, we could achieve something that is not bad with with that taken with that piezo. Uh, we'll go with the large piezo now, and we'll see how it sounds. Sounds like there is only bass. It sounds so bassy. It looks like there is a high cut filter. So all of all of these three take were in my opinion pretty shitty but with some work I think if I get to synchronize all these Yeah if I get to synchronize all these three take will have a rough idea of what this guitar, the guitar could sound with the three piezo combined. This could be your best chance to have a, a nice sounding by combining all these three piezo microphone into three different track and record it at the same time. Um, well, actually I didn't play it quite exactly the same but it could give you the rumble of the, the big piezo and the, the gain which is pretty high on the large piezo which was really impressive but maybe too much bass but it's not bad because you can, can always cut when there's too much but it's harder to add something when there is not enough in, inside a mix it's always better to just cut if you have too much uh, so this is what concludes the video now you can hear all the different take and uh, the small one had a really crystal clear in the high frequency but really no response in, in the bass one. Uh, the medium was pretty average, was a good balance but lacks a little bit into, into the bass frequency uh, and the large piezo just had an, an amazing gain uh, and an amazing input but 
lags in the high frequency. So my guess would be to combine maybe the large piezo with the small one and place it at different places on your guitar and experiment and try to do a record of this. Uh, so let me know in the comments how it went. If you try these and if you try uh, recording with a piezo mic, how is it sounding? And don't miss the video next week. It's about the Blue Crystal microphone. See ya.